So this morning, our lesson or our message is, is titled Developing, so it's kind of long, Developing the Culture of the Kingdom of Heaven in Our Children. And that's what we're talking about, developing the culture of the kingdom of heaven in our children. And so while it is Youth Sunday, I'm going to be talking a lot to the adults and the parents as well, but children, I need y'all to listen so y'all can know what God requires of us. So the first thing I might say is what is culture? We're talking about developing the culture of the kingdom. Okay? What is culture? Culture is defined as the characteristics of knowledge of a particular group of people encompassing language, religion, cuisine, which is what you eat, social habits, music, and arts. So to say that where you can understand, culture is a certain way a group of people act. It's a certain way a group of people live, the kinds of food that they eat, the kinds of music that they listen to, the type of clothes that they wear, all of that has to do with culture and what culture is. And so we're talking about developing the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Okay. All right. So if you can't write everything down, kids, it's okay. It's okay. Just listen. All right. Culture has to do with what you wear and what you eat. All right. And so... How many of you go to school? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. So you go to school. And how many of you have ever been to Walmart? <laughs> I go to Walmart and I see some strange things at Walmart. It's a lot of different types of people that go to Walmart. And I pointed that out because we're getting ready to talk about cultural differences. Okay. There are a lot of cultural differences. We are. We live in what? Uh, do we live in South America, North America? North America. North America. Okay, and we live in something called the United States. And they call us in other countries the Westerners, okay? Um, and the, when, when um, different people in different countries, say China or Africa, begin to wear clothes like us, they say you're dressing like the Westerners, okay? So that's how we're referred to, but we're called Americans, okay? Because we're from the United States of America. So over here in America, what's something that Americans typically eat? Raise your hand if you think you know. Jeremiah. Pizza. Okay. All right, uh, Mark. Vegetables. All right, Jeremiah. Hamburgers. Hamburgers. I think that's truly an American food. All right, one more katana. Yes, he did say vegetables. I'm going to get one more, Joseph. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Interesting that you said spaghetti, because spaghetti is actually an Italian dish. Oh, Pastor Larry. Hot dog. Hot dog, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I believe that's an American food. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now. All right, so different cultures do different things. And so if I said I feel like eating some Chinese food, what might that look like? Rice. Say it out loud. Rice. A bunch of rice. Okay. And what else, um, Jacob? Sushi. Some sushi. Is that Chinese food or that's Chinese? Japanese. 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 Okay. It's a little close in culture, but that's Japanese food. Sushi. Okay. Let me get some money, Megan. Chinese. Vegetables. Lots of vegetables mixed in in that rice. And typically their vegetables might look like bell peppers, and big old pieces of onion and big old pieces of carrots mixed all up in that rice. Okay? Put your hands down. I'll ask another question. And so we see the different cultures when it comes to food. We eat differently. Okay? And so in Chinese culture, if you were to sit down to eat, you might not grab what we grab, a fork and a spoon. What might you grab? Chopsticks. You might grab some chopsticks to eat that food. All right, or over in India, if you sit down to food, you might not grab anything. You might just use your God-given tools called your hands, okay, or your fingers. All right, we don't want to eat right now. Okay, that will look savagely. But to somebody, that may be the way you eat because our cultures are different. 
And so we're brought up in these different cultures. In Chinese, if you were to greet somebody, what might you do, Brother Micah? <laughs> of course, your language would be different. Okay, if you see someone is Chinese, they're going to say something in Chinese to, to greet you, and then they will typically bow. All right. Some countries think it's offensive to shake hands, and particularly your, your right hand. In Turkey, it's offensive if you offer your right hand. Okay, but to us, we offer our right hand. And so, if we're going to cross cultures and go to different places, we might need to learn these things because they're going to be looking at us strange and we're going to be looking at them strange. Okay? But we're not talking about just these earthly cultures that have been developed over time. We're talking about developing the culture of the kingdom of heaven. All right? So what is the culture of the kingdom? We know that there's a scripture that tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So, we know that there's a difference between the world's way of doing things, the world's culture, and God's way of doing things. All right, and so we got, we're going to kind of dig into the culture of the kingdom. When, it come, when we come to Christ and give our hearts to him, we must be, according to Romans 12 and 2, transformed by the renewing of our, anybody know? Mind. Of our mind. We got to change the way that we think. All right? Now, nobody likes to be, I guess, the oddball or left out. And so that's one of the reasons why when we do go to different countries, we kind of try to learn some of their customs so that we can blend in a little bit, you know? So if every, we go to the restaurant and everybody's having chopsticks, we, excuse me, you have a fork, you know, and you, you have struggling, so you would probably learn how to use those chopsticks. So that meant you had to gain knowledge of how to use it so that you could use it properly. Well, it's no different in the culture of the kingdom. He said we need to be renewed, transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to change the way that we think about doing things, what things, everything everything all right there's a way in the kingdom that we're supposed to speak to one another there's a way in the kingdom um, how we express ourselves even emotionally even if we get angry there's a way in the kingdom that we're supposed to be it's the way that we're supposed to wear our clothes we have a different way of getting married I saw one um, culture, I believe it was some part of India, where they have what is called a marketplace. And these girls get all dressed up to go to the marketplace. And guess who's on the menu? They are. The ladies are. And then the men come and look around and see which one he wants. And then he go and pay the father or the uncle however much he's supposed to pay and then he takes a woman to be his wife. That happens over in another culture. But see, in the culture of the kingdom, we do things differently here. Amen? Amen. And thank God for that. <laughs> All right? There's a, a, a type of music that we're supposed to listen to. There's a, a way that we believe when it comes to what's right and what's wrong to do. Okay? Developing the culture of the kingdom of heaven and the culture of this kingdom listen to this it takes precedence over all other cultures when everybody when all the nations and all the different people come into this kingdom this culture it, it supersedes what their mom and grandma used to say it supersedes the traditions of the elders this word of God takes its rightful place in their hearts and becomes what rules and governs them. We don't have to go to class. Did you have to go to school to learn how to speak English? Did you? You just start talking, didn't you? You just start saying, Mama, I got that. Or, I'm hungry, I don't eat, eat, right? You just started saying different things, and as you continue to grow, you started saying more sentences, 
because that is what, what, what you heard and saw every day. The culture is not something that we go to school and learn. It's a behavior that is being presented to us on an everyday basis. Right. And so we adapt to that. And we learn that we eat with a fork. We learn that we don't just shove food in our mouth and how to eat properly and how to sit down and eat your food. We don't just stand around the kitchen or stand in any place in the house eating our food. We actually come to a table and we sit down and eat. But we learned that not because mommy said, okay, now I'm gonna teach you how to eat, but you did it every day. It was a part of your life. And that's what God wants for his people. He wants for his word to become a part of your everyday life. Deuteronomy 11 and 18, I'm gonna read that. Y'all not have Bibles? Get your Bibles if you have one. Deuteronomy 11, verses 18. <coughs> It says, therefore, shall ye lay up these my words, my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if you diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and cleave unto him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. God wanted them to teach their children. He said, diligently. Yes. Diligently. That means you got to sit down and take time to show them how to do it. You can't just say, if it's the first time, son, I want you to learn how to cook pancakes. Go down there and get the mix and follow the instructions on the bag and make about 10 for us. And expect that it's going to be some awesome results. Right. Don't even get your mouth watered for nothing because it's going to be a disaster. You didn't take time to show them how to do it. And so, parents, it said teach them diligently when you... Get up in the morning. You need to be introducing them to prayer. As you're walking in the way, you need to be correcting behavior according to the word of God or giving them, imparting some wisdom into these young souls according to the word of God that's going to help them grow up and develop the culture of the kingdom in their hearts every day. He said, put it about your hand. He's just like, look, don't, don't let this thing slip from you. Put it everywhere. They used to have these bracelets that said, WWJD, what would Jesus do? They used to wear them bracelets just to remind them, you know. And so this is how much we're supposed to be imparting into our children, teaching them diligently his words. He said, put by my words in your heart and in your soul and in your soul. And so if you want them to do it right, you're going to have to show them how to do it step by step. Amen. And then the next time, you're going to have to monitor them while they do it step by step. Right. And maybe by the third time, they can do it by themselves. But pre adventure, he might just got a little bit of difficulty understanding. You might have to still be there to help guide them away to make sure they get it right. To make sure they get it right. Amen. Amen. It's important. It's important. We as parents want to see our children successful. We do. I've never seen somebody say, I hope my child failed. No. They want them to be successful. Even the unsaved get embarrassed if they find out that their child has been caught lying or stealing. Mm -hmm. 
they become ashamed. They quickly will scold the child and express their disgrace. Even if these acts of righteousness have never been taught or modeled before them, they want them to be good. We all want them to be set successful in having a reputation of being a good little girl or boy. That's what we want to hear from the teacher. That's what we want to hear from different ones in our congregation. Your child is so good. Nobody wants to hear your child is so bad. We all want to hear that good report. But this behavior doesn't come automatically. Right. David said, according to Psalms 51 and 5, that he was born into sin and shaping and iniquity, and I'm fully convinced that we are too. Right. We were born into sin and shaping and iniquity. Psalms 22 says that we need to train up a child in the way they should go. Right. And when they're old, they won't be fine. Amen. Train up a child in the way they should go. When you start on a new job, they don't just say, all right, um, clock in at 8, I see you at 5. Nobody does that. Nobody. You might think that simplest job might be emptying a trash can. You, you, you took a, um, a janitorial job. They're going to walk you through what they want you to get done, right. accomplished as adults, to make sure that you have a successful day. And so train up a child in the way they should go. This is an everyday thing. Amen. This is an everyday thing. Does it take work? Does it take effort? Yes, you have to train them in the way they should go. Then when they're old, it won't depart. It, it's not going to come automatically. Training begins at home. Training begins at home. You can't wait till you get to the grocery store. You can't wait till you get over your friend's house and start trying to say, sit down. What are you doing? Sit yourself down. <laughs> you know they run around at home. <laughs> and they looking at you crazy because we'll never sit down. <laughs> so training begins at home. You want them to sit down at someone's house, you make them sit down at your house. That's Amen. Right. That's right. You get embarrassed when, when uh, an adult calls your child and they say, what? Don't you say that to them. It starts at home. Amen. You teach them when an adult calls you, you respond, yes, ma'am, or yes, sister, or so on, you know, brother, so and so, in a respectful manner, then you won't get embarrassed. Amen. It begins mm -hmm. in your house. That's right. Yeah. We must roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty in this clay right. if we want to take part in molding and shaping them into the image that is pleasing to God. Two of the most important lessons that we learn were taught by Jesus Christ. They're found in Matthew 22. I'm talking to you today, I'm reading a few scriptures, but it's so much that can be said. I hope you hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. Matthew 22, verses 36 says, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? What is the great commandment? Jesus said unto them, him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. He said, And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Right. These are the two that we need to be keeping before our children. How to love God. Who he is. Children, you need to know who God is and how to love him with all of your being. And then the second, how to love your neighbor as yourself. There's a father in the Bible by the name of Adam, right? We hear about Adam's first two sons. Who knows their names? Cain and Abel. Thank you, Grace. Cain and Abel. The Bible does not tell us this, but you can gather from reading that Adam taught his sons about God. 
And I can gather that because at this particular time that we hear about these sons, they were bringing God an offering. Amen. All right? And Abel brought an offering to God that was pleasing to him. Amen. And Cain brought an offering to God that was not pleasing to him. And Cain got so angry, not with himself, but with his brother, that what did he do? What did he do, Katana? Killed him. He killed his brother. He killed his brother. How many of you got a brother in here? Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Pretty much all y'all got? He killed his own brother. It is your parents' job to teach you, to teach you the right thing to do. But it's still your decision if you're going to obey. And Abel, he chose to obey. And with him, God was pleased. But Cain chose to disobey. And God was not pleased. And he ended up taking his brother's life. So you've got to have a willing heart, children, to obey and listen to your parents. But I want to bring out something in this point. First John, the fourth chapter. Verses 20 through 23. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. And he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he, I'm sorry, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Right. Right. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So God wants you to do what to your brother? And do what to your sister? To love them. In the kingdom of heaven, in the culture of the kingdom of heaven, we love our siblings. We love our siblings. Amen. We become friends, Elijah, with our brothers. We become friends, Mike, Mike, with our sisters in the kingdom of heaven. We don't fight one another in the kingdom. We don't call each other names in the kingdom. They do that in the world. We don't isolate uh, a sibling and pick on them or make them feel like they're not a part of the family in the kingdom. All right. But we make everybody feel like they're a part. Amen? Amen? Amen. We don't do that, anything outside of that, in the kingdom of heaven. But if we don't make them do it at home, then what makes you think when little kids start coming to the church that they're going to do it there? If you don't make them share at home, if you don't make them say kind words and correct bad behaviors at home, what makes you think that behavior is not going to carry over into the other part of their lives? Right. Why do you think they're sharing at school? Why do you think they're so kind at school? They're not. They're the same way they are at home. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so we got to teach them because the enemy after Adam and Eve sinned, the next sin we see is murder. The next sin we see, not of a stranger trying to break in their house. This is your brother who you grew up with. Right. This is your brother who you knew. And you took his life. You got so angry that you took his life. We see other, other brothers in the story, Esau and Jacob at one point. Esau wanted to kill his brother. He was hunting him down. This is your brother, your twin. We see where Joseph, what happened to him? His brother sold him into slavery. Nobody went looking for him. Let me go and find Joseph and see what happened to him. We shouldn't have did that. We don't hear anything about that. They just sold him into slavery told the daddy he did, and went on with their life. Mm -hmm. Siblings. And right. so, parents, it's your job 
to stop them from fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Put disciplines in, in place when they do because you want to get this culture in them. You want to develop this in them that we don't do this Amen. in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen, children. Amen. Amen. All right. There are a few points that I want to bring out, and so I'm just going to be jumping from point to point, but follow me if you will. Psalms 101 and 3, David said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Psalms 97 and 10 says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Right? Amen. Ye that love the Lord, you hate evil. Amen. We don't need to set evil before our children. Amen. You might say, of course not. I would never do that. I would never put Jeremiah before evil. I would only put him before things that's good. But there are some evil things that come through this thing called the television. And the enemy is doing some and causing people to do some wicked things right. that are against God. It's against God's people and it's against the way that we're supposed to live and govern our lives. Amen. Wicked things are coming through there. One of the things the enemy is using is something we like to play, and I want y'all to listen. And if you want to stand up, you can stand up. You can stand up there. So you can wake up. All right. Um, it's called video games. How many of y'all play video games? I used to try to play video games Nintendo when it first came out. Put your hands down. And I was no good. But my brother. He could play. He'd be all levels to the whole end of the game. I'm still on level one, struggling. You know, trying to get the cheat code so I can skip to the next world or something. You know, I was just no good at video games. But there are some of you that are very good at playing video games. You know, and you really like video games. So the enemy, he took note of that. And he said, I'm going to put some things in these video games that's going to disturb and destroy their spirit. It's going to change their nature. I'm going to introduce them to some things and by way of music and by way of sight that's going to get into their heart and get into their mind without them even knowing it. Because all they're going to be thinking about is this is so fun and I'm trying to win this level. What if your video game is teaching you how to steal? Y'all heard about games like that? You got to steal in order to get a prize? Or what if in your video game it's teaching you how to kill? You got to kill a certain number of people to get a prize. I'm not talking about shooting aliens or robots. Those are not real. But I'm talking about actually killing people to get a reward. You see how the devil did that? Mm -hmm. You want the reward, and you know killing is wrong, but it's just a video game, right? Just a video game. I'm not doing it for real. Well, there was a study done, and they were saying that people who have a steady diet of playing violent video games may, become to, may come to see the world as a hostile and violent place. If you continuously play these type of games, you look at the world like it's just, this is a bad place to be. This is a violent world to be in. It creates angers in you. These results suggest that a that it could be a cumulative effect in making video game players more aggressive and violent. These games could make you Elijah, Mark, Joseph, Mike, Megan. They can make you more aggressive and more violent. You don't even realize it. You're just trying to have fun playing your video game. But the enemy has told you something to make you feel like it's okay. What did he say? It's not real. He said, it's not real. I want to remind you in Genesis, the sixth chapter. 
verses 5. It said, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the, the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. God destroyed man yeah. in the flood. Y'all remember the flood? He destroyed man in the flood, not just because it was evil, but he looked into their imagination. Amen. He looked into what was going on in their mind. Because before an action takes place, it starts here. Amen. You imagine it. And he said their imagination is evil. And so while you're sitting up there playing those video games, killing people and robbing people and carjacking people, God looks down and sees your imagination is evil. You're trying to go find a weapon so you can kill somebody. Your imagination is evil. The, the enemy has tricked a whole lot of people into believing it's not real. God don't just look at the act that's carried out. He's looking at the imagination. Now, I can't have a whole church that nothing. <laughs> He's looking at the imagination. All right? And so if these things lead you to imagine things that are against God, we need to put them away. We need to put them away. We need to get rid of them. Well, I spent so much money. I think I'm going to sell it. Don't sell that to somebody else's child. Because what God wants for you, he wants for everybody. Amen. Throw it away. It's called sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Developing the culture of the kingdom in our children. Amen. We must not be afraid to correct our children. Amen. We can't be afraid to tell them what's good and what's evil. Amen. In the Bible, there's a story in 2 Samuel 13, chapter, about David, and he had a son named Abner. And Abner decided he wanted his half-sister Tamar and was sick because he couldn't have her. Abner had a friend. He had a friend and told him how what he can do to get her. And so he listened to his friend and he ended up having his sister. And her brother, Absalom, heard about it. And he got so upset about Abner and what he did to, to their sister. And King David, the father, he knew about it. And what did he do? about such a horrible thing that had been done in Israel? Nothing. He didn't do anything. He didn't put him in prison. He didn't find him. He didn't make him marry her. He didn't do nothing. And so Absalom said, well, I'm going to do something. He waited a whole year. He waited a whole year and called for a feast to be done. Then he told his servants, on my word, Y'all get him, take him out. And he killed his brother for what he had done to his sister. But I believe if David had a stepped in and did something Amen. to make this situation right, that anger in Absalom wouldn't have grown so till he committed murder against his brother. Right. So we can't be afraid to correct our children. Right. We can't play favorites in the family. It causes something to grow, a jealousy to grow, a hatred to grow right. in the hearts of these children. And you might say, well, well, they're not going to grow up and kill. You better look at the news. Mm -hmm. right. You better turn on the radio and get your head out the clouds. Because I read story after story where children, this 15-year-old and this 12-year-old, they were in a family of seven children. 
15 year old was the oldest. He said he's he been wanting to kill his parents since he was 12. And then the 12 year old said he just had a desire to murder. They murdered their whole family except for the two year old. And the eight year old barely survived. They slit her throat. And they sat in the courtroom laughing. Parents, tune in to your children. The report is their mom heard them talking about it and she just laughed it off and thought that they were just playing. You better know your children. You better know when their nature and their behavior is starting to change and why. Tune in. Are you, are you spending more time with the little ones? Because you feel like the older ones just got it. They could be developing a jealousy, and you don't even know. That's why you got to stay connected to God so that he can tune you in to what's going on with these children. These are little lives, little people, little souls, and they, then it's not just growing up and life going to happen. Things are being developed in them, and it's starting in the home, right. and it's starting with you. There's another father named Eli had two sons. His sons were being uh, wayward with the ladies of the temple. And Eli didn't correct him. He knew about it, said something about it, but he didn't correct him. He didn't reprove them. They should have been put out. They should have been exposed or something. Second, 1 Samuel 2 and 29, God said, Thou honor thy sons above me. That's what he told Eli. You honor your children above me. When you don't correct them for things that you know is against God, you know that your child is known for lying. Oh, yeah, he lie all the time. No, that's not something that you need to be saying. You need to correct that behavior. You're honoring your children above God. All right. When you let them get away with things that are not pleasing to God. When you justify or make excuses for sin. God said, you're honoring your sons above me. And what happened to Eli and his sons, they all died in the same day. God comes back by way of judgment. Megan read the scripture this morning. Children, obey your parents. And the Lord, for this is what? Honor thy mother and father that our days may be long on the earth. Right. That your days may be long on the earth. Listen, obey your parents because God sees your disobedience and he'll come back by your way. One of my children had, uh, we were getting ready for bed and they caught a charlie horse in the leg. I don't know if you ever had that. It's a real tight, bad muscle cramp. You cannot move. Or it will hurt. Even more. And they couldn't move. And I mean, we was working on it and giving them things to eat and trying to, you can't hardly touch it, you know, to see what, you know, what's going on. It was bedtime. All the other kids had went to bed. Michael had to carry them upstairs in that position. And I'm like, I didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm praying and anointing and rebuking and I'm like what's going on you know it was not letting up I never seen one that bad before mm -hmm. till if you if he if they were still you know it was okay so I had not prop them up I was sleepy I propped some pillows up mm -hmm. I just just lay there and hopefully they go out you know call me if you need me I was so tired you know but before I left out I said pray and ask God is there anything you've done wrong reason why this is happening to you and ask God to forgive you. And I went on and I got in the bed and I got in the bed, was turning good and I heard some boom, 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 running down the hallway. Boom, 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 boom. I said, what happened? I, I, I asked the Lord, he showed me something that I had did early and I asked him to forgive me and as soon as I forgave, as soon as I asked him to forgive me for it, the pain left my leg. I was like, praise God. And they were crying, and I was happy, and I was rejoicing. God does not like disobedience. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Even in children. And if we don't get them parents, the wrath of God is coming against them. I thank God it was just a Charlie horse. It could have been worse. Right. And so the wrath of God coming against the children of disobedience, that's Bible. And so don't think because I'm young, oh, he's not going to bother me. No. You need to obey. You need to listen. You need to respect your parents. Doing this, smacking your teeth at them, that's disrespectful. Yes. Roll your eyes at your parents or at adults when they tell you something to do. That's disrespectful. Yes. And going in your room and talking about them, they get on my nerves. They stay in breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's disrespectful. Yes. And you might feel like, did nobody hear me? I said it, I said it to myself. Guess who heard you? God heard you. And he did not like what he heard. Mm -mm. We're talking about developing the culture of the kingdom. We're talking about learning how to do things God's way. Amen. Learning how to do things His way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We got to lead by example. Yes. Parents, adults, we got to lead by example. Right. You think they don't see y'all when y'all come to church? Mm -hmm. They see Brother Larry. They see Brother Darion, Brother Greg. Right. They know. Who to ask candy for? Or who, I better straighten up, fussing by him. <laughs> they know that. Even little Andrew, I said, I'm going to you by Uncle Greg. He's like, Uncle <laughs> 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 Greg going to make you sit down and, and be quiet and listen. Right. And I ain't mad about it. <laughs> so, but we got to be the example before our children. Right. We got to model this lifestyle every day. So it becomes a part of their life because it's a part of our life. Right. If you are just living a set of rules, you, you, you're not there yet. Holiness is a way of life. Right. It's what we do. Prayer is what we do. Singing songs that bring glory to God is, is that's what I know. Because it has become a part of our life. Right. If I hear my children yelling, which I have before, very disturbing. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Do you see me and your dad yelling and arguing? Do you see us fussing and going back and forth? They say, no. Then why are you doing it? But can everybody can't say that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't do what I do. Just do what I say. That's highly impossible. <laughs> but can we change that? Yes. We can say, sit our children down and say, I haven't been being the best example that I can be. But I want to be going forward. Right. I want to be the man of God and that father or that mother that God is calling for me to be. And I'm sorry for how I did it before. And it's going to take a little time, but I'm going to get there. Yeah. And if, if you do it now, they're young enough. If you do it now, it'll become a part of them. Right. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I did it did. You used to fuss all the time. Oh, yeah. He fussed a little time. Amen. Why? Because you have become so obedient, and he has let God change him and do what he needs to do in his life. Modeling that before them. We're teaching them a better way to communicate. Amen. A better way to solve the conflict. Right. Teaching them how not to just snatch it out their hand. Come on now. They're going to grow up and become adults. Amen. You want them snatching people pen? That's my pen. There are some adults that act like that. Amen. That's mine. You didn't even ask. Can I say? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are some that, and they'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. They are so for real because this is what has been modeled before them. They feel like they've got to defend and protect. Yeah. They become them haughty goats. We're trying to raise some lambs and some sheep here. Right. But it starts here. You can't raise no goats and then be surprised when they act like goats when growing up. Bull right. headed, stubborn, don't want to listen to nobody. Mm -mm. It has to start here. Being the example. Amen. Teaching them how to be angry and sin not. Not to lay hands subtly on no man. I have a child to say, oh, um, such and such did it, mama. Like they did? Yeah. You saw them? Oh. But I know they did it because. 
<laughs> you didn't see nothing. But you done made up this whole scenario as to why you think that they're the one that did it. You got to teach them not to lay hands suddenly on no man. We're not going to do that. Let's get all the evidence. Let's ask first. And if they're saved and they said no, we're going to pray about it and God will reveal the truth. Right. But if you didn't see them do it, come on now. We're not no private investigators around here. <laughs> don't start, don't accuse them of doing something when they didn't do it. All right, children? And that goes for parents as well. Right? Sometimes you might be get used to your child being a certain way and, and you're asking, did you do it? And they say, no, ma'am, I didn't. I know you did. I know you because I know you because last time and they just they little spirit just get ripped apart you know because they trying to tell you the truth and you don't believe them. don't lay hands suddenly on your children Amen. hear the whole matter hear the whole matter then let's come to a conclusion and see what we're going to do about the situation you're modeling the culture of the kingdom of heaven Amen. before your children Amen. Amen. Don't don't let your kids fight my mom didn't let us fight. Now, when we became teenagers and, and young adults, we might have wrestled. And she'd be like, y'all stop that, but we'd just be wrestling, you know, having fun. But when we were little, she did not let us fight. And if she heard about a fight, you get a whooping. Because we don't do that here. Don't let your kids fight. You think it's cute. I, I was riding in a car, and I looked in the back seat of another car, and this cute little boy, he had to be like three years old. He had a gun. It looked so real, but I know it was a toy. You know, he was just doing his little gun. I'm like, what is he going to grow up to be? A lawyer? A doctor? A, a murderer? Maybe a game maker? You putting that in his spirit. You teaching him that these things are okay, and we're teaching our children it's okay. It's okay to fight. When you don't can't find the words, just throw hands. And so when they grow up, and they're working, and they're being intimidated or somebody's talking down on them, they're just going to start fighting. Well, son, why are you fighting? Now you're in jail. That's all I know. That's all I used to do. But teach them how to communicate. If you're angry, sometimes you've got to walk away. And don't say things when you're angry that could destroy or hurt or tear down. That goes for parents as well. Sometimes we need to walk away, just go, go to the other room. We only want to look at you right now. I'm upset. And then when we get to a place where we can deal with it, then we deal with it. Amen. And what we want the same thing for our children. But it starts with us. Right. Amen. Don't think because you just bring them to church on Sunday and Bible, Bible study and we can talk that good lesson. They got to know. They going to they be good. They took no. We have some good children. Uh uh. Don't think this is it. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, it's just the beginning for some and just an extension for others, you know, of what's supposed to carry on in their life. It's just only beginning, and it starts, it starts parents with you. It starts with you. Developing the culture of the kingdom. We're almost done. We want our children to be faithful husbands and wives. Don't put anything before them that will teach them differently. Amen. You want them to be faithful husbands and wives? They got some cute little what they call kitty shows out there. And then the husband might be having a girlfriend. All right. And they just sitting up there watching it. Y'all better look at Disney and what they putting before your children. Right. Okay. You want them to be the type of man that take care of his family and come home and be devoted. Be that before them. Mothers, you don't want to raise your grandchildren. You want them to visit. Be that before your children so that this can be established in them. There are some TV shows where coming out now. For our children, um, it's on the Disney Channel. You can't tell if the character is a girl or a boy. Their name, you can't even tell what it is. And they're purposely doing this, even how they address the person, that they won't let you know if it's a girl or a boy. 
on the show. Mm. And so when they get a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you're not sure, is that, is he a girl? Is that, is that a girl with being born? What, what is that? No. Don't say, well, I, I, I know I ain't going to do that. Turn it off. Right, right. When you see things like that, turn it off and rebuke it. Say, that's not a God. We're not going to watch that. Amen. Don't just send them in there because they got on your nerves and you had a long day. Go watch something on TV. Don't do that. Amen. Because the devil got a whole lot for them to watch. You go watch it too. Right. To see if it's appropriate. Amen. In the moment the boy put on a skirt, the boys, the moment you see a boy put on a skirt, turn it off. Amen. Go tell your mama, tell your daddy. They went to girl. That's y'all. I don't want to watch that. Amen. Amen. The moment they do something that you know is not right according to God, turn it off. Amen. Say, we, whoever the oldest one, turn it off. So we're not going to watch this. Right? We're going to find something else to watch. I remember we were watching um, Smallville. It's a, um, it's like a little Superman show. We were watching it a few, few years back. Brother Michael liked that show. So I like Brother Michael, so I can sit there watching that show too. <laughs> Then the, uh, one of the main characters was a man decided he was going to get married to a man. That was the last time we watched that show. I don't know what happened next. I don't care. That was the end of that. The devil will be trying to reel you in and you can't wait till the next season. You can't wait till the next episode. Then they slip one in on you. And then you be trying to say, well, I know that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to skip that part. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, don't be trying to see what happened next. It's okay. It's okay to live without that show. You're going to be all right. Adults, too. You're going to be okay. It's more than life than that show that happened in the imagination of somebody's mind and grabbed your attention. They're making money, 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 and the devil just selling, selling, selling to our children. Turn it off. Let them see you turn it off. Right. They keep using God's name in vain. Turn it off. Amen. Turn it off. That's the devil. You'll never hear them say, oh, Muhammad. They'll never say that. Oh, Allah. They don't do that. They always call it on our God. They always call it on Jesus Christ. Why? It's the enemy. Because God said, don't take my name in vain. Right. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, we're going to take his name in vain all the time. Yeah. Turn it off. Let it go. And if it's hard, fast. 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 Children are like, I can't fast. I'm hungry. Fast from playing games. Fast from watching TV. Right. Yeah. Watch that flesh. Oh, we're just going to fast at three. Oh, we're just going to fast at 12. 12 uh, we're going to fast today. <laughs> we're going to try again tomorrow. <laughs> That's that flesh that don't want to die. You got to let it die. And it'll be all worth it. It's all worth it in the end. Amen. Amen. In doing this, their views and their opinions will be shaped and founded on the word of God. Amen. On the word of God. And so when their, their peers ask them, and, and I'm, I'm a, a living witness, we go to school and they ask you, why you don't wear this? Or why you don't listen to this music? You haven't heard that song? Why you don't? And I'm like, I'm a Christian. We don't listen to that. That's right. We don't dress like that. This is how we dress. That's all I knew. What's the ways of the Lord? That's all you want your children to be exposed to and to be able to tell people of the hope that they have. Amen. Amen. I just want to close with this king. 2 Kings 22. I've always loved the story of this king. Such an inspiration. 2 Kings 22, verses 1 through 2, and I'm going to skip a little bit, but just listen to me as I tell you the story. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He was eight years old. Any eight-year-olds in here? Anybody eight? eight? You're eight? Okay, Nia's eight years old. So he was Nia's age when he became king. Isn't that pretty cool? 
And underneath the hands was fire. And they light the fire. And they burn the children. This had gotten over into the people of God. These were supposed to be people that worship God. They started doing this type of thing. And they would play the drums real loud so they wouldn't hear the baby scream. But Josiah went through the land and he tore down those idols. God. And he got rid of those priests that did those things. And he purged them from their evil. Some of them still did things in secret. Thank God. But it, under his rule, he did it. He was 26 years old when he did these things. He was 26 years old and he did it in one year. He did it in one year. It didn't take him a whole long time. He, he got it done. He heard the word and he got it done. Parents, it's time to purge your homes. It's time to go through these rooms, go through these drawers, go through these backpacks and these folders and these video games and look and see what evils the enemy has crept into your home. Amen. And do as Josiah and purge and sanctify and get rid of. Get rid of it. Amen. Because the enemy has found a way. He's found a way to infiltrate. But I thank God for who he is. Yeah. When the enemy was coming up against Hezekiah, he prayed to the Lord. God said, I will defend myself. Amen. If you belong to God, mm -hmm. he will defend your household. That's right. Your fathers. He will defend your children. He will let you know. What is going on with them? Right. I'll share this in closing. The Lord has blessed me, and I thank him for it. I try to thank him for it and not be afraid of it. But he's given me a gift of discernment. And I was going, I had just prayed the night before. I sat in the hallway, and I prayed. I called every child's name out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, reveal to me the things that I can't see. What's going on in my children? What is the enemy trying to put in there that I can't see? Show me, Lord. You know, that was my prayer the night before. So this night I'm going into my girl's room and I'm putting them, I'm putting them to bed, and I see something dark and short go go past my vision. And I'm like, what was that? And I said, well, no, nah, did I see something? Maybe I didn't, but I know I did. But I don't know what that was. Say not vegan, me. <laughs> you know. And so I went on. The next morning, Michaela wakes up and she says, Mom, I had a dream. And I was like, what happened? She said, in this dream, it was these two little spirits. And they um, was following Mike Mike. And they followed him into the bathroom. And then I went into the bathroom and then they, I think they followed her too. And then so I said, what did they look like? She said, it was dark and short. And I said, oh, that is what I saw yesterday. I said, and I came in her dream. And so I went and I prayed. I said, Lord, what is this? Inasmuch as you showed it to me in the physical, and now you showed it to Kayla in the spiritual and through her dream, what is this, Lord? And so I waited for like two days. And he began to show me that it was a spirit of laziness. Mm. And it had attached itself to Michael Jr. And because she clings to him and she loved her brother, it was getting ready to attach itself to her as well. And I began to talk to him and labor with him. He just broke down because he knew it was true. Oh. Then he began to confess and he repented. And we told him, Spirit, you got to get out of my house. Yeah. You got to go. Amen? Amen. If you parents tune in to the Father, he'll show you things. He may not show you how he showed me, but he'll show you things. He may visit you in a dream or he may give you eyes to see or ears to hear a conversation. They might be way in the other room and he just tuned your ear in to hear something that you needed to hear so that you can correct that behavior or so you can see what the enemy was trying to right. do, what he was trying to put in their spirit. Yes. But if we too busy parents with our jobs and with our own things that we going through, the devil is just having a heyday yes. with these children. And they'll grow up in the truth, in the church of God, and we're wondering, like, what happened? What happened to them? We got to tune in to them. Amen. We got to put the boundaries in their lives that God has set in our lives so that the culture of the kingdom of heaven can be a, become a part of who they are. Amen. Amen.
Let us stand. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let us stand.